Hello. Yeah, I guess that screams insecurity, doesn't it? How are you this Sunday? I hope you're doing Hello. good. Oops. Yeah, I guess that screams insecurity, Goodness. doesn't it? Goodness gracious, I forgot to turn off the sound to the feed. Okay, how's everybody? Um, as I said, we will do a heart of my heart pendant, and that will be actually uh, a three, two piece pendant that we will do with this set of uh, cutters. There will be one on the outside, kind of like a frame, with one inside kind of dangling. So what we need first, as I said, in the materials necessary. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Shirley. <laughs> um, we need uh, first a metallic clay of your choice. You choose whichever you want. And then some black because we are going to shade the metallic clay to get it a little bit darker. Bonsoir, Cécile. Um, donc, j'ai dit qu'aujourd'hui, on va faire le cœur de mon cœur euh, pendentif pour euh, Valentin. Et euh, comme j'ai dit, dans les matériaux nécessaires, on, a, on va avoir besoin du, du set d'emporte-pièce euh, en forme de cœur et une pâte polymère métallique qu'on va euh, mixer avec un peu de noir. So, good morning, Teresa. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning, Francois. Francoise. So, I'm going to first remember that I always use the that the one and a half cutter for my mixes. And whenever I mix, I always get my clay on the thickest setting. So it doesn't really matter what cutter you use as long as you use the same cutter for everything. Hi, Carol. Hi, Brenda. And uh, that all your clay is on the exact same thickness. So I'm going to actually, because I'm in order to cut this, I'm going to need a pretty wide sheet. And this will actually look almost like the graphite Primo accents, but uh, when you do the this combination, it's a little bit shinier than the regular graphite. So I'm going to use two parts silver and what I have here is pretty much one part black. And I'm going to make it square so you can see. But generally speaking, believe me, I have a pretty good eye when it comes to measuring um, clay for projects and for color mixes. I was too lazy to get more uh, Primo black so I'm going to use a little bit of souffle because I had it already cut. It's kind of rainy here. It is much warmer but it's rainy so that kind of enhances my pain level. So see it's pretty much a square with a little bit lacking here that I'm going to put here. So the first thing we do is to do our metallic mix. How has everybody been doing? Anyone in a extreme winter area? Because by what I'm reading in the news, it's absolutely horrible and in uh, I don't see soil. Eh? I know that Canada has been really hard hit. I was reading on the news that Montreal had like minus 17 for a week. 
the coldest winter in over 146 years. Oh, you never did? There's quite a few all the time, and uh, a lot of artists have uh, live. By what I noticed, not a lot of the English-speaking artists, mostly the French-speaking artists. Probably because us from Europe who are of descendants of Rome, me being a Romanian speaking of a Latin descended language, we are a little bit more talkative. We like to talk a lot. And it's kind of, <laughs> honestly, I was thinking one day, you know, the if you look at Europe's map, and you get the distance from Rome. The closer the that specific population that is speaking a language that is of Latin origin, the closer to Rome they are, the more talkative and more expansive they are. I mean, think a little bit. The, the Italians are the most talkative. The French, the Romanians, the Spanish, the Portuguese, they are talkative, but not as uh, as much as the French. Okay, so I did my mix, and I'm going to go on Sika setting. And be very careful to well align your mica particles to form the sheen. And then let me see if I have it good or if I need to. Oh, I can cut. Okay, so the best thing to do now is always place first your one of your uh, cutters whenever you try to do bezel like things like this. Hi, Angel. To be careful and have all the distances all around even. And what I use generally, because you know my hands are fairly weak, to make sure that when I press the cutters won't shift, I use my acrylic block. I place it right here, then I look again because by placing it, it may move a little bit, the cutters. And I look again to see if they are well placed. And then I press. And this way, I am getting a good... Always to remove something from around the cutter, just do a cut from the cutter out, if it's all around and then you'll be able to grab it easier. So I'm going to take this out, and then I'm going to take this out, and then very gently, don't put the X-Acto knife here because you're going to nick the outside one. Put it a little bit inside and just pull. To lift the inside part. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay, I'm going to bring this a little closer. Because what we are going to do now is simply, remember I told you that you will need a needle and a very fine point uh, bowl stylus. Yeah, you can use also if you have one of these very fine uh, rubber tipped uh, sculpting tools or the gum cleaner you can use these too but generally speaking all you need is a of course i dropped stuff i'm horrible uh just a needle tool and a very fine ball stylus and what we are going to do here is very simple we are going to make a few uh designs and you can actually also use, if you have any of those little um, camper cutters, you can use those, but very carefully so you do not distort the shape. Okay. 
So I'm going to make very fine lines and designs. I made a little line. Always drives me nuts the way that it reverses my image. Hi, Debra, second Debra. And make the patterns deep enough that they would retain acrylic paint, but not too deep, deep as to distort the patterns. And I can actually do another kind of line like this. Oops, sorry, I touched the camera. Let me see if like this you'll see better. No. Like this you see better. But light only from one side because you can see what I'm drawing. Hi Pauline. Hi Stacy. Hi everybody. I didn't see on the chat. Okay, now I'm working a little bit blindly. And just make all kinds of little patterns on this. If you have itty bitty stamps, you can use those too. Hi, Soyle, I was wondering about you. Bonjour, Sophie. Uh, donc, quand vous faites vos petites imp impressions, prenez garde de ne pas déranger la forme de, de ce que vous avez coupé. Et tout ce que vous avez besoin, c'est uh, l'aiguille et le petit, uh, le plus petit uh, stylus. Je ne sais pas si c'est comme ça qu'on l'appelle en français. Cécile, tu peux m'aider ici. Hi, Paulina. Let me see what to make here. Actually, I'm going to get one of those itty bitty cutters to make some more. And my chair is going to squeak. Possibly. Possibly. So yeah, if you don't have these, sorry, if you don't have something like this, you can use, you know, like the the end of a straw or the end of a, a pen mine. But just don't press very hard. You don't want to disturb the shape. Let's try and make a little flower or part of it. Get another one. Okay, is it better on this side? No, it's still on this side is the best. Okay. 
You cannot really see very well what I'm doing on this. Okay, so you can, if you want, you can add some rhinestones to this. I would suggest to always get the, the hot fix ones because with those, you don't have to worry about having to glue them after they are baked. So I think I'm going to use a few small rhinestones because it makes things pretty. And I got some uh, rhinestones that were actually shipped to me by mistake because I had ordered the uh, three millimeters and the vendor sent me the one millimeter ones. And they are very hard to handle, but I'm going to try to still use a few. So always when uh, placing a rhinestone, try to make it a little bit of a groove and see how these are itty bitty so I can use my itty bitty stylus. I'm going to place some here. How many do I have? Five. Let me make just five four grooves because I might not be able to. And then bring it where you want to set it and very gently press on it to embed it a little bit in the clay. Come on. Turn around already. But the rhinestones are just purely optional. You don't have to use them. Especially if they give you so much grief as they give me. My camera should focus. One stupid camera. Here you go. That's the problem when you have nerve damage in your fingers. You don't feel if you grabbed it or not. And of course, you can put more embellishments. You can put some glitter if you want. Okay, and this is the first part and it's done. Uh, so, you know, you use a bowl. You mean after the first baking? The, the color will not keep its shape until it's generally, unless you use the, if you looked at the way that I'm making them, most of the time I would be putting them, I would first do the middle, 
the um, uh, sandwiched. That's the base, the one that supports the whole color. And uh, I use bowls most of the time. And you've seen one of my most favorite things for baking colors. Of course, you don't have one of these because this was just a lucky finding. But you need something that would be like this, that would be round. I also have a salad bowl that I'm using a lot. And then I put, uh, oh, what do you mean you do it on shapes, putting it together layer by layer? No, you do the middle one, the base. And then most of the time it is advisable to not take it off the baking thing when you put the front on. Because it depends on how thick you made that middle. But generally speaking, I prefer to not um, take it off or until I put the backing on, I will put it back on the base. I don't let it uh, free bake until it's got at least the two layers, either the middle and the back or the middle and the front. But it's more advisable to keep the, the middle uh, sheet that's in the sandwich on the baking base when you're putting on the front. You only need to take it out when you um, put the backing on, like I did on my uh, cosplay color. Well, what? What ringtones? What pencil for your ringtones? I don't understand what pencil for ringtones. Okay, let me grab this and get it to the oven and then come and do the now remember uh these you want to have it very flat so in order to bake it very flat remember put it you need two tiles and two pieces of paper regular paper get one tile a piece of paper put this on the piece of paper cover it with another piece of paper and with the second tile and that's how you need to bake it Yeah, watch. I have several color um, tutorials. Uh, the latest two are using tiny Pandoras, but I have my own uh, templates for colors. And if you look, uh, I don't, um, I don't take it off most of the time until after I put the the front on. Okay, now here I'm going to put it with the wax paper on and I'm going to check it here or with this one to make sure it didn't get out of shape because if it gets out of shape when we come with the little one in the middle, it's not going to look very pretty. So gently, kind of, you don't want to cut it because this has to be well done. So if it's a little out of shape, you can push it in gently, gently. Or you can work it directly on a wax like I should have done <laughs> and not have to deal with all this. Okay, let me. Oh, rhinestones. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I need to get one of those. I need to get one of those. They are, they are the ones for uh, making nail art. I absolutely need to get one of those. I'll be right back. Let me go put this in the oven.
Now, do you want to make the little heart in the middle plain red? Or do you want me to show you a little bit of a, a pearlescent -y thing? Yes. Yes, it is wonderful. I am always very happy. Uh, J'ai dit, uh, vous voulez qu'on fait le, le, le petit cœur au milieu en plein rouge ou vous voulez que je vous montre un, un uh, peu de pearl uh, jeu de couleur? OK. So, then we have this. This is the pomegranate red or whichever clay you're using. And I'm going to get a little bit of white pearl. And because I don't have here the, actually can use the tiny cutter. But the best is to just, you know, I have this. I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to do this. This is another way to measure an approximate uh, color combination. But what I want to have is I want to have the white a little bit super in the middle. So I am going to do that overlap thing. And because it is a big difference of colors, of course, it's going to take a few passes. But the overlap thing is when you want to have the pure color left at the ends of your Skinner blend. So we are going to do this, see? And the best thing to do is to just grab this and just add it here. Because you don't want to waste it. And then always, if you don't want to get a lot of staining, you can mix your uh, red with a little bit of translucent. You can go as far as half and half, honestly. And because that makes it not stain so much. And this you can do with the uh, uh, pink by mixing white pearl with any of the sunset or magenta pearls. But with white, it just looks better and then if you don't like it that white you can actually go uh, ahead and just shift the skinner blend now this and i will um, show you i have a tutorial coming in three three parts that's a little bit of a play you know uh one of them is how to make let me actually go grab it I showed it to Teresa yesterday when we were chatting. And this is by an idea I got from, it's inspired by one of Teresa Pandora Salgado's um, videos, the, I think it's Flaming Hearts, something. I'll link it when I put up the tutorial. Okay, this is the Blazing Heart cane. And then from this, this will be the first part of the tutorial. It will be in three different videos. This will be the first part. Then the second part will be, and of course I did not bring it. Okay, sorry for that. The second part will be how to make from the remnants of the end canes when you do this, how to make full rhodochrosite. Okay. And then the third part is how to reduce and assemble the blazing heart cane, which honestly, I would just leave like this because it makes pretty big pendants for people who like the, the flaming heart, the blazing heart motif. But then how to, the third one will be how to reduce the big blazing heart cane and form another heart cane 
that you can use for various veneers and other things. I don't know if you can see it well. And then how to reduce this one to micro cane level and do little borders. So yeah, I hope you will like that tutorial. Now let me get back on my reducing on my skin and blend because I was working here and I just, you know how I start talking and I just forget myself talking. Okay, what happened? Oh God, Shirley. Yeah, you know how I like to play with canes and change them. And it's from uh, Pandora that I learned that. And I started finding it so much fun that I'm now I'm doing it pretty much all the time. And remember, don't worry if your uh, Skinner blend starts widening, because once it gets to the ends of the rollers, it cannot widen no more. And then you'll have it almost ready to be uh, prepared for jelly rolling or fanning. So you want to get something like this, right? And then let's just get it ready for, because we are going to fan it. So stack it. And always, always make sure that the two pieces are well stuck together because if they are not, the moment you put them in the pasta machine, the ends from the middle about, they will start going like this. So always make sure that they are well stuck together. Okay, now be careful because we are going to fan this in a triangle. And this also I learned from uh, Pandora because our end thing will be a triangle. We want to start it with a triangle. And my base will be the whitish part and my point will be the reddish part. So I am going to actually start fanning it wider here and then getting smaller as I go. I shouldn't have gone this wide, but okay. Let me try and undo it because my cane is not that big and it's going to be a pain to reduce. Sorry for that. Okay, so I'm going to go about this wide. And then as I fan, I start making the fan folds a little bit smaller. And smaller and smaller as I go. And yeah, you might want to check uh, Pandora's Flaming Hearts thing. I might not need all of this. I'm going to get rid of the end of this red. I don't really need it. Okay, so I have a fairly triangular fan fold that I'm going to start reducing a little bit. First, I need to get it properly. And now watch this, what we are going to do is change the direction of the triangle. And for this, we need to bring these down. So we are going to do it very, very, remember the barbed cane where you pull the, the ends in? 
that's what we are going to do very gently you don't want to go too fast because you'll have your uh, gradient starting to slide too bad on one side or the other And now we can definitely reduce it properly. Until we can cut it into four manageable pieces. Now we are going to put them together. I should have used a little bit more white, but oh well. Okay, hold on. And triangularize it. So you need this to be in a triangle. And do the same with the other two. and then put them together and now we have a little square and now we are going to start reshaping the little square okay we will need one of the ends to become flat so not completely flat but more flat than it is and then the, these ends too we will flatten them a little bit and you might have to get it a little bit flatter like this as well and then grab your cutter rearrange your little lines if need be Of course, you can do slices first if you want, but my thing is why I'm doing it this way is because I intend to do something else with it. And I'll show you in a minute because I want a nice edge. So it might be a little tricky to take it out, but it's fine. And then what we need to do is to cut the top of it where it's all distorted. And then gently flatten it with your finger so it will be slightly bigger than the just like one millimeter on each side bigger than the your cane slice thing so it has to be about this thick at this point and then grab some grab some king grass place it on top of it then very gently cut and you might cut the cling wrap too but that's fine because you can take it out with patience so now you have your little blazing heart 
And if you want this blaze, this gradient to go more, just use more white than I did. I should have used more white, not just that little. But you can clean the edges a little bit. And then the other thing that you can do, now of course you can make just a plain heart and then cover it with a, a texture, for example. But another thing I'm going to do, I'm going to actually put another rhinestone right in the middle of it. And I'm pondering if I want a regular clear or if I want a red one. No, I think I'm going to put a regular clear because there's enough reds there. And this is, is again, one of the smaller ones. We don't want it to be too flashy because we already have the pendant fairly big there. So, again, I will make it a little bit of a dent. just a little bit and then place the rhinestone then gently press it in place and it's going to be because it's a hot fix it's going to bond with the clay and you don't have to worry about it uh, coming off okay so this is pretty much the the thing, but we need to do something else to this. We need to uh, get it a little attachment thing. So let me grab my wire. Well, remember, I told you that you will need some wire, too. And so I have here some uh, 22 gauge. That I'm going to try and get some out of. Okay, good job. I don't like this new system with uh, these rolls. I hate it. It doesn't work right. It goes all over the place. I prefer my little spools. Okay, so... I'm going to make a little loop. Trying to see what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to actually cut part of this. And remember, you cannot put something straight like this in a piece of clay because it will come out when the clay gets baked. So what you want to do is to make a little bit of a, another loop in here. So that it would pretty much grab on the on the clay. You can make it as twisty as you want, just make sure that it's straight. And then we shall take the exacto knife 
open first of all there's a little spot here i didn't clean and make a little cut here and this should be more on the edge then place the little wire in and it's a good thing when you place it properly and just push in and then very gently press this back in place then remember what I, I've said in several tutorials until now that the best way to get the, the least necessary sanding just grab a little bit of alcohol give it a spray and then very gently because when I do this I barely need to put a little bit of the super high grit and see how I have here it's not well I don't know if you can see but there's a that's from the seam of the cutter so what I want to do is to get a little bit more alcohol and just gently rub don't let it come off. I mean, you can let it come off if you want. But gently rub until you smooth out all that area. And check the other ends. Oh, it's nice, pretty, and smooth right now. So it can get in the oven as well. Let me go check on what's in, in that uh, oven. Welcome back, Tiponet. Okay, I'll be right back to get this in the oven. And then we'll take care of the, the first one. Okay, there we are. This one is. And give me just a second to get rid of some of the stuff that I got here that I don't need anymore. And just takes room. And this I'm going to need. This I don't. Okay, now it is to choose what, and this is why you want it a little bit darker, because now you will choose an acrylic, metallic acrylic paint that would be light in color. And considering what I've chosen until now, uh, 
I think that I actually want a reddish metallic paint. So I have this royal ruby that's in the dazzling Meca metallics of deco art. And the other thing is, we will have to, and let's do it right now. And why I didn't do it with uh, when this was still unbaked is because, generally speaking, if you try to put a needle through this when it's not uh, baked, will distort it. So let's grab a, and this I recommend this hand drill to you. It's in my Amazon influencer store and it's about uh, $10 for the whole set. And you get this and all these drill bits. See how many they are. And it is absolutely fabulous. It's got diamond uh, drill bits and it goes I mean I know that uh, one of my sponsors said that she actually tried it on other stuff but it goes on uh, uh, even on stone you can drill holes even on stone so I'm going to use my acrylic block to hold it still and make sure that you get a drill bit that is thin enough and it will not break your thing because this is where you can make or break i hope that i can do it in this angle and yeah you can if you have a bead pin and i think that blue bottle tree just posted an article about that then you can do that when your when your clay is still raw. But if you don't, it's going to be very problematic to do it when it's raw. Unless you want to do your outer uh, part thicker than just one thickness. Okay, you don't see what I'm doing. I'm doing this. I'm just holding it here. So I can very gently poke a hole. If you're afraid of doing this, you can poke a hole like this here and put a bigger jump ring. But I prefer to do these like this. Je le j'ai pas de eBay, Cécile. J'achète parfois. Ah, oui. Amazon. Mais si tu es en France, tu ne peux pas vraiment commander de mon Amazon parce que uh, il ne donne pas. And I went a little bit awry, but that's fine. Because we can do something else here. If you do like I did, and you mess up your hole and your hole doesn't come up right in the middle, we can do something else. And that is, you can just go ahead and cut this tip. And now it will not be that far off. There we go. And now we need a, we will need to put uh, an eye pin here, but not yet. Let's do the metallic thing. I don't want metallic all over the place. Now, if you prefer a brush, go ahead and use a brush. You know that I like to get my hands dirty.
just use the acrylic paint of your choice to do this. And let it be for a few seconds. And then first pat. Then take it gently and start rubbing it on the alcohol-soaked paper towel. Then let it be again for a few more minutes, a few more seconds. And then what you want to do is to simply get a piece of the towel that's clean and just douse the part with it, with alcohol. And you can use another uh, metallic paint, acrylic paint that's more vivid than what I chose. I just, or you can repeat the process if you want. I just didn't want it to be very flashy because it already has some rhinestones. So uh, you can use one of those uh, writing stamps to do this. Just make sure that you first put the stamp on and then you do the cutting. Hi, Tina. Now let's get the loop. The I uh, the I pin in here, so I'm going to make an I pin, or you can use one already made. It's up to you. But I prefer to make it. I made it too big. So I'm going to first make the loop on one end. I'm terrible at doing these things when I cannot see very well what I'm doing. And then gently place it in the hole you've just made. You need to be careful and check if this is straight. And then make another loop here. Uh, very important, whenever you're, you're dealing with things like this, don't hold on the clay when you do the loop. Hold on the wire, because especially on a piece like this that's fairly thin, it might break it. But the thing is that I want this to be like this, so I'm going to hold it like this. Because remember, the heart has it this way. And then if we put a bail here, the bail will come this way. So we want the loop on this one to be like this, but the loop on this one to be 90 degrees the other way. So let's hope I see what I'm doing. Sorry if I'm clumsy, but remember, this is the exact distance where I cannot see very well anymore. So, 
here's the potential of me messing up. Okay, and there we go. We are ready for this. And then you can, if you want, you can varnish it. And as I said, you can do, I mean, there we go. You can see better this way. And you can do all kinds of other color combinations, other type of metallic clays. You can even do a pearlescent and do the... the acrylic paint differently so it's entirely up to you how you choose to let me try and get the camera to focus come on there you go So yeah, once you varnish it, it's going to be prettier. You can try and buff it if you want, I'm, but you'll have to be very careful because it's a thin piece and you don't want to make it much thicker because it doesn't, uh, it doesn't look pretty if it's bulky. And remember, I always say I'm not a, a fan of cowbell jewelry. And this is fairly big as it is. And then once we get the, the little heart of the, out of the oven, the little heart comes here and it will dangle. And you can put it as is or you can use another jump ring, but not don't let it get too far down. But the little heart will dangle in the middle of this. And then you just put a bail here and you hang it to any chain or any... I don't understand. You use eye pins in polymer clay a lot in the same way that you use for regular beads. It's not a some something special. So what happened? Did you lose another dog? Yes, the heart dangles inside. Oh, you got bit by a dog. Why? What happened? I don't understand what you mean with ends like for a beaded necklace. I'm sorry, I just don't understand what you mean. Okay, let me go check on that heart and I'm going to try and see if I can buff this a little bit.
Okay, now the heart you definitely want to varnish or buff. It's still hot. I'm going to just throw it here. And yeah, I did. Uh, I didn't bring the Dremel here because it's quite a noisy business to use it. But this is how it looks when it's a little bit buffed. And I just wanted you to get the the idea of this whole pendant. So the little heart dangles inside the bigger heart. Mm. Doggles, you just use cream beans. You do exactly like any any jewelry thing. There's plenty of tutorials on how to to attach that. And yeah, I cannot touch the the core one. But essentially, this is how you do a heart of my heart. It's practically a heart within a heart. And again, you don't have to do just these little things. You can do a texture stamp. Just as I said, first do the texture and then do the cut. And uh, you can use all kinds of other things. This is just an idea. Okay. You can use different things. You can use a mokumegani. You can use... Uh, uh, all kinds of canes, all kinds of veneers, you name it. And then for the little heart inside, the same. I do, Tina, I showed in quite a number of tutorials, at least 20 of them, how to do that. I don't usually show it because it's very hard for me to do that at the angle that is needed for the camera view. But there are like a bazillion tutorials on how to create the, how to attach the toggles. But if you look, I have loads of tutorials in which I show how to attach toggles. Okay, so this is pretty much where we are. And as I said, you really want to varnish the little heart because you want the little heart to be the center of uh, the whole pendant. And no matter what you use, always try to make the little heart the flashier part. Remember, if you put two patterned things, they will distract attention from each other and neither of them will get the attention it deserves. So either do this very patterned and the heart just plain simple or do this simple and the heart patterned. But, uh, well, get the clay out and play. Okay, it got a little bit cooler. So, let's see. And as I said, you can use these or you can uh, use another jump ring. But you can just use this. And remember, don't hold on the clay. Hold on the wire. And deal exactly like you deal with any regular... I pin. Okay, let me grab a uh, bail and a string of sorts of some sorts. And we'll finish this.
Okay, I'm going to use this type of bail. Oops. Yeah, imagine that. Sorry, my hands work very bad today because of the rain. That means they don't work almost at all. But pretty much, I'm not gonna go look for a string. Okay, so. So there you go. No, I'm trying to find the best light. Not yeah. There you go. This would be the little heart of my heart. And you can see it's not very big. The ninety percent. So there you go. You can try it. It's a very nice piece for Valentine's Day. So if you're selling jewelry, you can try it in all kinds of versions on how to do the, the heart frame and the little pendant inside. No, thank you, Cecile. Donc, vous pouvez faire ça avec toutes sortes de, de modèles, euh, mais prenez garde, ne faites pas les deux euh, très encombrés, parce qu'ils vont attraper euh, l'attention l'un de l'autre et aucun ne va euh, recevoir l'attention euh, qu'il mérite. Donc, vous faites, euh, ou vous faites la, la, le grand cœur plus... Euh, texturisé avec des motifs et tout ça et le petit cœur euh, très simple ou vous faites le grand cœur très simple et le petit cœur avec beaucoup de texture et ça ça c'est seulement une idée vous savez mais vous pouvez le faire n'importe comment euh, seulement prenez garde si vous allez mettre un euh, tampon euh, sur le grand cœur euh, mettez premièrement le tampon et ensuite utilisez l'emporte pièce Euh, ne faites pas un porte-pièce euh, et ensuite le tampon parce que ça va euh, déformer le, le cœur. Oh yes, but I don't have, I know that I need to get the, the heart-shaped uh, camper cutters, but I don't have them now. So you'd need the camper cutters for the middle heart, or you can freeform it, but you can do like the the big one with using the middle heart cutter and the small heart cutter and then have a itty bitty uh, heart in the middle there. No, yeah, thank you. But yeah, and you can use the same principle with other shapes. Uh, remember, don't get stuck in a box, okay? Just because most of the people that you see use the same kind of cutters uh, and they use the same kind that it's like texture, same kind of bezel and texture or same type of cutter resin, it doesn't mean that you have to be stuck in the same rut. Think outside the box. Think how you can make it a little bit different. Remember, I showed you, I think, a few days ago, the other earrings I made. Just because I was playing with some remnants of my uh, abalone uh, things, and then I was trying to do more things with the jitterbug. Uh, by Helen Braille, and that's why I came up with that uh, cosplay necklace. 
But see, these earrings are exceptionally dynamic. So number one, you have these danglies. And these I just made with the teardrop uh, cutters, with the smallest one and then the next after the smallest. But they are also hinged here. See, and I showed you how to hinge stuff like in the, um, in the oil diffuser. So think outside the box. Don't get caught into the same rut and to do, into the same type of just because everybody makes it like that and they cannot think outside the box. It doesn't mean that you have to be stuck to develop. Okay. Yeah, mother of pearl hearts would work beautifully. Also, uh, if you you can go look, cause I have the four pink pink quartz, the old four pink quartz that uh, is ma mainly based in Primo, but I will do soon the four pink quartz in Pardo as well. But the four pink quartz also makes beautiful um, beautiful hearts. Yes, Carol, and the the ideas you come up with just blow my mind. You have a real gift for making jewelry. Uh, but yeah, you can use the um, the four pink quartz. Uh, another stone that I did that you can use is uh, jade. Uh, jade hearts look beautiful. Uh, also, carnelian hearts look beautiful. Practically, you can do anything. So thank you for being here with me. And uh, I will see you next Sunday. And just watch out and remember that I posted a little quiz contest on the Kaliana Facebook page. And you might want to go and think if you can answer you will gain free access to one of my sponsors only tutorials thank you for being here and have a wonderful sunday thank you goodbye